Kawahara, you're always wearing a mask, aren't you? Do you not have uh, confidence in how you look? I'm um, sorry, you because of that. I can't hear you, dude! <sighs> it means I don't want to talk to you. Go away. You're so boring. I felt bad that you're always alone in school. So I went through the effort to talk to you. I appreciate the thought. Come on, don't be like that. I bet someone like you doesn't get many chances to talk to girls. I do. Your mommy doesn't count. Heretikin, that's super rude. Yeah, but you're laughing too, ain't you? I mean, because... <laughs> Ayori, don't you think so too? Huh? Me? Yeah, you. You think this guy is lame too, don't you? What? I'm not sure. What kind of response is that? Don't tell me that you type as quiet guys like him. What? Um, that's not... Is that true, Ayori? I told you it's not. Why are you freaking out? That's very sketchy. Wait a sec, does that mean it's true then? Oh, is that so? All right then, Kawahara. I thought you already give you a kiss. You won't get many chances like this. Hey, Harada-kun. Hold on, Harada, what are you saying? I always likes guys like him, right? Hey, Kawahara, go for you. Will you leave me alone if I kiss her? Oh, Kawahara sounds like he's down for it. Uh, hold on, are you serious? I don't care as long as it's only once. Why you try to act cool, man? Uh, can you hurry up and get it over with? It's getting annoying. So, where should I kiss you? Your forehead? Cheeks? Lips? Uh, don't. <laughs> yeah, she said she doesn't want to kiss you even for a joke! Hey, Harada, you're going too far. I feel bad for Ayori. Well, what's wrong? Ayori, your face is red. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm fine. It's nothing. But Kawahara-kun's face... See, I knew he was ugly. I mean, he does hide his face every day, after all. Oh, this is seriously annoying. Are we done now? Can you guys not bother me anymore? All right, all right. Sorry, dude. I bet you were excited, huh? Nope. This is exactly what I wanted. I didn't even have to kiss her for you guys to stop bothering me. <laughs> you acted tough, huh? This is what happened one day during our lunch break. However, it seemed like this certain girl wasn't going to stay out of my life forever. A few hours after that incident, we happened to meet again. I'm so hungry. The shopping district during sunset hour was filled with many sounds, colors, and scents. In the midst of all that, the sounds of croquettes being fired by the butcher and the smell of meat as I passed the Yakiniku restaurant was aggressive. This could only be considered torture for a broke boy going through puberty. But if I try to go home by taking another route, it would take more time and make me even more hungry. Whoa, I am sorry. I'm sorry, too. I wasn't paying attention. Huh? Is that you, Teidishi? You seem different from how you are in school. What, Kawahara-kun? Hey, I haven't seen you since lunch break. Why are you here? My apartment is past the street. What are you doing here? I, um... Hey, Ari Chan! We're having a sale today! Wanna buy something? Uh, really? I'm serious. Maybe I'll buy something then. Alright. Oh, you're shopping. <gasps> Shoot! What's wrong? Did you forget to buy something? Not that. Hey, that supermarket is doing a limited sale, too. Eggs are 70 cents. One pack per person. Really? Seems like it. Kawahara-kun, come with me. Why? One pack per person, right? If we go together, we could buy two dozen eggs. Uh, okay. <laughs> I can't believe the minced beef was on sale, too. Tonight's vegetable curry is going to be a feast. The eggs were cheap, so I could make soft-boiled eggs, too. I'm just tired. Oh, thank you, Kawahara-kun. You're welcome. Wait, no, not that. Ugh. I hate that I'm so weak when it comes to the word sale. What's wrong with that? Nothing better than buying cheap things. Yeah, but 
It's not about that. Um, Kabaharukun, can you forget about what happened today? What happened? You know that I'm shopping dressed like this? What's wrong with it? Because it's lame, right? I mean, you do seem different from school. If everyone finds out that I'm dressed like this and running around to buy groceries on sale, they're going to stop hanging out with me. Are your friends in that group really that great? Uh-huh. I guess to each their own, it's none of my business. Sure, I won't say anything. Really? On one condition. Is that... Is it going to be a dirty thing? What are you saying? Because you've never kissed a girl, right? Have you kissed someone then? I haven't, but... Then stop acting like you're better than me. So, what about you then? Me? That reminds me. I haven't kissed anyone for work either. Work? I've retired from that industry, though. Thanks to that, I have no money. I have no idea what you're talking about. Basically, I'm saying that I'll keep my mouth shut, so please feed me. Hey, don't keep looking around. Well, I was just thinking about how it's my first time going into a female classmate's room. The way you said that... So, what, you've been in other girls' rooms then? Yeah, for example. When I mentioned a couple of female names, Teidishi first laughed, seemed exasperated, and finally started making fun of me. You know, Kawaharakun... What is it? Your imagination being that big is kind of cringy. What are you talking about? The girls you mentioned are all famous actresses, models, or idols. Yeah? Yeah? You sound so confident. Listen, there's no way a normal person like you could be friends with people like that. I'm kind of embarrassed that your imagination could get that crazy. Huh? Taidishi, didn't you see my face today? I thought that was the reason you said no to a kiss. I did see it. Just a little, though. Right, so you know then. What? Hold on, what are you talking about? What am I talking about? Didn't you recognize me after seeing my face? I'm sorry, I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea either. This face, you really don't recognize it? <gasps> that reaction kind of hurts my feelings. I I'm sorry. The reason I said no to the kiss was, uh, um, basically the same as how I'm feeling now. I was just surprised. Your face is super pretty. Thanks. What, that's all you're going to say? I've heard it plenty of times already. So you don't know who I am, then? Who you are? You're my classmate, aren't you? I guess so. Here, I'll show you a picture, see? I opened my phone and showed a private picture of the actresses, models, and idols that I mentioned earlier. Of course, some information might be confidential for their work, so I showed her a group picture. There were a couple of guys, too. Those guys are all famous people that are on the front cover of magazines. What does this mean? Well, we all worked in the same industry, so I'm still close friends with them. Oh, don't tell people, okay? Worked in the same industry? I used to be a child actor. Um, you don't know? When I told Sadie she had the title of a couple TV shows I starred in, she became even more surprised. I used to watch that. Oh, thanks. I didn't know you were that amazing. Not at all, I'm not that great. I've stepped out of the spotlight already. Huh? So, when you said you have no money... My parents give me an allowance. I already used up all my money this month to buy a newly released game. I live on my own, so I don't have any food at home either. So you decided to freeload off of your classmate? Sorry. It's fine, but the food at my house is normal. I don't think it suits your taste. Don't worry. Uh, curry tonight, right? Curry's my favorite food. The fact that you're not expecting much is kind of irritating. <laughs> See? I told you, it's just curry. Mm, it's super delicious. Uh, really? <laughs> What is this? It's spicy, but I can't stop eating it. It's so good! <laughs> it makes me happy that you're complimenting it that much. Is it more for seconds? Do you want a boiled egg with it? Of course, put it on! Okay, okay. Oh, I'm so full. You ate a lot. I'll keep my promise and won't say anything. Oh, 
Yeah, I forgot about that promise. Don't worry, that's why I told you my secret too. Oh? That's why you told me? You'll feel safe with me knowing your secret if you know something about me too, right? That's true. Hey, if you're really that hungry all the time, you could come to eat at my place sometimes. Seriously? It makes me happy to see you eat a lot. I'll come by for food from time to time then. Okay, okay. Just like that, I occasionally visited my classmate Ayori Teidishi's house. As promised, Harada left me alone. At the same time, Teidishi, who was a part of his group of friends, never talked to me either. I don't intend to make friends in my school, so this was good for me. I was finally able to have peace and quiet, but that was only in school. Oh, Kawahara-kun, I'm going to that store too. What? You're still gonna buy things? Of course. It's great having a spare hand to hold things. I guess. We distance ourselves in school, but I help out with shopping after classes on some days. This is an exchange for her blessing me with her food. She already had me wrapped around her finger and groomed. Hey, Hori Chan! Looking cute as always! I'm not going to loosen my wallet even if you compliment me. <laughs> You're a tough one. I mean, I bet you'd be more than happy to hear that from your boyfriend than an old man like me. Boyfriend? The young man next to you. We've been talking about you two recently. What? Kawaharkin isn't my boyfriend. Oh, that was a surprise. I never thought they would think that you're my boyfriend. I don't think there's anything to worry about. You just don't worry about anything in general. More importantly, this meat is delicious. Gosh, you're really one that's practical over aesthetics, aren't you? Seconds, please. Okay, okay. No, don't worry about it. If he says anything about it, I'll explain to him. Who's he? Harada. Why Haradakin? Why? He likes you, doesn't he? He was clearly irritated when he thought that you were interested in me. Oh, is that what that was about? It seems like you're not interested in him. There are good things about him. But I don't like that he's a little rude to people who aren't his close friends. I see, that makes sense. What does? I know that you're a good person. How do you know that? I couldn't find a single good thing about Harada, but you were able to find something despite that. That's probably because you're a good person. People with bad personalities can only see the bad things in people. Me, for example. Are you trying to compliment me? Nope. Apparently, you don't loosen your wallet with compliments. So I'm just saying the honest truth. <laughs> I see. But, Kalaharakin, based on what you said, the fact that you found something good about me makes you a kind person, too. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm not a good person. Not at all. I think you're mostly, sometimes, sort of a nice person. I don't think that's a compliment. Yep. Well, there won't be any money coming out of your empty wallet if I compliment you anyways. The incident happened about a week after we had this conversation. What I'm saying is, I want to be friends with you, dude! You don't want to? That's not what I'm saying. Yeah? I'm glad we're on the same page. Can you go buy me a drink then? What about the money for it? Oh, well, can I pay you back later? But you, you can't do that? We're gonna be friends, but you can't even lend me a few dollars? Here, I'll pay for it. I'm sorry about that. What about Aori? Why are you being so nice? What do you mean? See, I bet you do like weak guys like this. I told you already, that's not it, it's just... Just what? I just think bullying people like this is uncool. What? What's wrong with you, Ayori? Kawahara for us and now him? If you're gonna act so high and mighty, be nice to him. Good for you, dude. Ayori said she'll kiss you. I never said that. What's wrong? You're nice and like me, aren't you? How many times do I need to tell you that that's not what I'm saying? But you're the same as me in the end, ain't you? You're making fun of guys like him. That's why you're pretending to act nice and enjoying your superiority. But you still look down on him, so you can't kiss him. That's a completely different story. That's not true. It is. I'm not just going to kiss anyone out there. So what? Is there a guy you like or something? It's not that, but... Who is it? Who? Tell me! 
If you say it, I'll let you out of this. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but can you end this? You're in the way, Karahara. This isn't any of your business. Honestly, I didn't want to be a part of this. I guess annoying when I have to deal with you. But it seems like I've been groomed. What are you saying? Are you another one of the boys who got the wrong idea after she was nice to you? Well, maybe so. I think she's a great person for saying that someone like you is good. Seriously. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you trying to say? Besides, she already turned you down. Don't you get it? She didn't want to kiss you. Oh, you're boring, aren't you? You were the one who suggested that Tate Ishii and I kiss in the first place, right? Then be supportive of our relationship, won't you? What? No way. Is that Miharukun? How? You don't know him? The child prodigy actor Mihirokun. He was in a bunch of TV shows and commercials. I do know him. No way. Is it really him? I appreciate you a little bit, Harada. You're the one who got us together in the beginning. Thanks to you, we're super close. What? The thing is, we're so close that I go to her house sometimes. What? Kawahara-kun? Oh, Tadishi, what's for dinner tonight? What? It's the curry you asked for a little while ago. You really love curry, don't you? Wait, what does that have to do with anything now? Hold up, Iori. What was that about? Is he your husband? Your hubby? What? Uh... You need to be interrogated. Tell us everything! Come here! What? Huh? So that's that. I need you to stop bothering her. Oh, of course. Uh, continue to be nice to her as a friend. Karahara, you! If you want to pick a fight with her, you'll be fighting with me. This is annoying, yeah, but I'm okay with it if it's for her. I'll show you how serious I am. I used to go against the adults in the entertainment industry. I wasn't going to be scared of my classmate. I mean, I know how he feels, but that was me. When I lightly tapped his shoulder, Arata became quiet. Just like that, this commotion ended peacefully. Um, Kawahara-kun. What's up? Uh, thanks for today. It's nothing. My way of saying thank you for always feeding me good food. At least that's what it was supposed to be. It got a little personal, though. Are you upset about it? Nope, not at all. Gosh, I was worried. I mean, nothing I said was a lie. Does that mean... Huh? What does it mean, exactly? Who knows? Either way, it means that I'm not gonna let go of someone who can cook such delicious food. Excuse you? Am I your maid or what? I never said that. Liar. That's what it sounded like. But I'm a little sad. About what? Everyone knows your secret now. It's not just something that I know anymore. True, but you being dressed up like this is still something that I only know. Gosh, very arrogant of you. It had to be done. Do you want me to tell you a new secret in exchange? Teidishi, it seems like how... Uh... I'm not going to tell anyone the words that I said after this. After all, it's a secret between Teidishi and me. Yo, Katsumi! What's up, sir? Next week's gonna be your exhibition game, you know. We're facing Minami school, right? Yeah. I heard their racist serves are pretty rad. I'm telling you, if I slack off with my receives, my arms are goner. You got this. Losing your arms is the last thing that's gonna happen. Today's lunch was nothing unusual. I, Sota Haiba, was just bantering with my friend, Katsumi Goto, like always. But things soon after this thing happened. Goto-kun, you remembered what Teach Kawanishi told you after class. Oh, it's you, Yase. Yep, got him loud and clear. Then it should be fine. I'm counting on you, okay? Sure! Oh, and Haiba-kun. Huh? What's the matter, Yase? Leaving your uniform unbuttons against the school policies. Oops, sorry. Like, isn't this just hot during classes? Can't you see it's too sunny at this spot? Um, I didn't ask for any of your excuses. Yeah, right. 
Ta-da! This good enough for you? Huh. I guess that looks okay. My apologies for causing you trouble. I mean, you aren't really causing any trouble. It just kind of looked lame, in addition to you being one. Did I do something wrong? Nope. Okay. I'll see you later then, Goto-kun. Gotcha! Dude, why does Ayase hate you? So she does hate me, huh? That's the way I look at it. I mean, just look at her! <laughs> um, you're kidding, right? Wow! Like, we should go there to hang out real soon, and bring everyone along too! Ayase's really vibing well with the others, except you. Sure looks like it. So that begs the question. Did you do something to her? Probably some lewd, right? I mean, just look at her. She's really pretty. We're talking about Rinkayase here. Boys flock just to see her participating in a match, you know. Uh, by the way. Yeah? You're really pushing that idea that I already did something wrong? Am I wrong? Dead wrong. Sure, dude. So why does she hate you? Pete's me. Like, I want to know, too, why. Aha! Oh, right! Huh? That sounds like a plan. Yep, looks fine to me. We'll go with that. Y you ought to do that! Uh... What's getting you all fired up by yourself? Look, dude, just fess up straight to the assay. Nothing's gonna happen if you keep dilly-dallying. Huh? Besides, I just hatched up a really good plan! I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> nah, not really! Right, so you want to explain what's this all about? Look, Tanaka's hospitalized at the moment, am I right? Tanaka? Yeah, for appendicitis, right? Yes, you are! So after classes, Teach Kawanishi's going there to hand out today's homework to him, and... Teach Kawanishi's gonna do that? No, you're gonna do that. And why would I? Well, two of our class reps ought to go there and visit Tanaka. Counting me, that's one, and... Oh, Ayase. Was that the reason she talked to you just before? You guessed it. And while we're at it, maybe you guys can build some rapport. You just want to cut classes, ain't it, Katsumi? Nah, not really. See, you'll be doing me a favor, Soda. You checking on her means more practice time for me for our upcoming match, right? Honestly, that's it. Dude, I'm begging you, Mr. Boss Dude Manager. Not fair. Do I really have a choice if it's our team ace asking me this? Yeah, <laughs> it's settled then. So that's what happened. I'm now gonna go with Ayase to check up on Tanaka while she's hospitalized. So, uh, was this the right way to the hospital? Yeah. Right, it was. <laughs> Is there something funny? No, there's nothing to laugh about. Awkward. Crap, so she does hate I'm walking together with her. Look at that, she's so cranky right now. But this is part of my duties too. If it all means more practice time for our team's ace, doing a few chores here and there as the team's manager should be a piece of cake. Hope she goes easy on me. Oh, a convenience store. Uh, can we stop by for a minute? Fine by me. You're buying something? We're checking up on her. Guess it wouldn't hurt treating to her a snack or two. Let me see. Yep, found it. We'll go with these cookies. Uh, habanero cookies? Yeah, definitely this one. Gosh, that's so lame. Do you really think a girl would be happy getting those on any given day? But Tanaka just loves anything spicy, so... Ugh, seriously? And why do you know that? It's not like you two talk that much too, isn't it? I guess so. Still, I mean, it's pretty common seeing her eat something spicy. <laughs> so you're observing Tanaka all these times, huh? Well, not just her. Look, Ayase, 
I know for a fact that you simply love those apple flavored gummies, right? Here, you can have these. Um, for what reason should I be accepting this? And also, I do know too that you're earnestly putting effort into our club activities, the I say, so uh, please accept this. Just something to cheer you on. So, uh, no? Okay, thanks. Thanks for coming all the way here, you two. You didn't have to. Don't mention it. Okay, forget these. I mean, it's tough having a surgery. Like, really. <laughs> oh, but I'm leaving in two days. Hold on. What's Hyba doing here? Look, you won't find any panties here, however you rummage all you want. What? You're the worst, Hyba-kun! You're getting me all wrong here. I tagged along to check up on you, Tanaka, and even got your favorite snack. That's all, really. Th th that's the newest habanero cookies. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Thanks. But none of this extreme stuff before you leave the hospital. It's going to be bad for you. I'm thinking of asking the nurse to hold on to these for a while. Gosh, is there really a need to wait? Meanie, you stingy meanie. If you want to eat this ASAP, it's best you rest and stay still for these remaining two days. Really, Haiba, I didn't know you'd be the type who would go into such links. But having a goal you're keen on keeps you motivated, right? But I'm already trying my best here. Ugh, a friendly advice. The girls will hate you if you keep doing things like this. Like Ayasi, agree? Don't you just hate guys like this? Uh, me? Uh-huh, you. Uh, right, I agree. However, I think Hype is not entirely wrong on this one. Ayasi, you traitor! Sorry. Oh, that was unexpected. What? Thanks for having my back. Just when I thought you honestly hated me all this time, Ayase, this happened. But it's not like I hate you, really. If that's the case, then why are you avoiding me? I'm not avoiding you or anything. Is that so? I must be mistaken, then. Yeah, you're misreading things. I mean, it's not that I hate you or avoiding you. It's just... Just what? Forget it. Okay, let's leave it at that. Shall we go back to our school? You still have club activities after this, right? So, hey, tell me. Is it fun working as our club's manager? It's rewarding. I'll give you that. Huh. No plans to being back as a player? I already stopped playing after middle school, so... So we continued chatting about such silly things until we reached the gymnasium. Back in middle school, I was sort of a volleyball player who's on par with those playing as a rep in the interstate level. I was a middle blocker. Each ball that I set it up allowed our aces to go for that spike. One that decided it all. That surely kept me on my toes. It was different from being a spiker position which usually stole the spotlight but that feeling of being able to support my teammates with my utmost efforts just to ensure victory simply the best feeling ever however there's still one thing i wanted to try it was far cooler than being a spiker a libero or even a middle blocker and that's why i quit playing after middle school oops my bad can you pass the ball over here sure thing Aiba, we're running low on sports drinks. Got it. I'll go grab some after this was all over. Where's the first aid kit? Just right below the basketball ring. Dude, that guy's working his ass off. I mean, Aiba, really? I've heard Soda Senpai is a really famous middle blocker back in middle school. Wonder what made him quit. Maybe an injury? Might be. Man, I would just quit if there was no way I could be a player, though. Being a manager, seriously? Like he's just clinging on for dear life. Kind of pathetic if you ask me. Just plain lame. Um, Goto-kun, those freshmen seem to be chattering behind our backs. You fine with this? Ah, leave them be. Let them talk all they want. But... I mean, the dude's totally chill with it. The dude? There's really no one other than Soda, right? Look. Just leave them alone. Jeez, I don't really know what's running through Haiba-kun's mind. You're here, coach? 
what brings you here? Oh, Hyba. You see, I came here with these keys as I'm supposed to shut them gym doors, but Hayase's still practicing, and now I'm sort of in a bit of a pickle. No worries. I can close them for you. Can I count on you, kid? Honestly, you'd do me a favor if you could help me out on this one, as I still have things to attend to. Gotcha, coach. Leave this to me. <laughs> Oof! Her shoes made a squeaky sound as it scraped against the wooden floor. The ball made a whooping sound, and then a roaring thud erupted across as the ball bounced past the court. Oh, that was real close! Practicing jump serves? Yes, I am. The way I see it, your tosses are kind of on point. Your posture, too. However, your timing's probably a bit off. Eh? Here, watch me. That feeling when your shoe squeaked as it scraped across the floor was simply the best. It's been a while since I tossed the ball up for my own. I gestured my hand into the air, gained momentum, and thwack! The ball made a thundering echo, way louder than when Ayase did her serve, as it landed across the other court side and bounced away. Oh my god! Whew, that feels great. It has been a while, but glad I can still hit him hard. Hitting something like this should probably be a piece of cake for you, I say. Really? Yep. The way I see it, seems like you're kind of impatient with these. My advice is just hold on for a little bit longer till you lunge forward and whack them. My timing's a bit off, huh? Got it. Yeah, this won't do. Look, patience is the key. You're jumping way too early. Sorry, can I have another shot at it? Guess there's no helping it. Sure, I'll take you on. All these are just a sort of muscle memory, so you really have to work on them at a steady pace. Thanks. Keep your eyes on the ball! Yes. That won't do. You're not looking at all. That was my bad. Oh, right. See, I ask, eh? Can you try tossing the ball lightly? It should feel like a casual throw into the air. Oh, why? Look, just try it for now. Just spread on my silly idea for once. Got it. Ha! Run now! Oh, okay. As a squeaky sound echoed inside the gym, Ayase's body floated effortlessly into the air. Her form was a sight to behold. Everything was just perfect. As she smacked the ball, thud! There was no contesting that. That serve was just remarkable. Yep, good job! You gotta be kidding me. It went in so perfectly. It was the best feeling ever! Congrats! And try not to forget that feeling when you hit it, okay? Oh, it's really simple. So if you can't wait for the ball to fall down first, you toss them lightly into the air so it'll fall down fast. That's the trick to it. See, I gotta say... You seem to be impatient when it comes to these. So I came up with something that matches your style. I'm impatient? You're such a jerk. Just telling the truth, right? Ugh, you're such a bully, Hybacun. Okay, that wraps up today's practice. Guess we should head home now. Plus, it's already dark outside. Here, I'll escort you home. Oh, that bicycle looks totally sick! Wow, thanks. I saved up half a year for this. I was able to finally snag these. Oh, it was like love at first sight back then at the shop. You need to take good care of those. Yep. Um, is it okay to ask you something? I mean, you still have all those really impressive serves, but why quit being a player? Performing well is not really the point here. Heck, and it's not like I got injured too. Well, you just made things more confusing. Don't you feel you're simply just a plain boring manager? Seriously, even the freshmen are making fun of you. You thought the same too, Ayase? Just a manager, huh? Huh? Well, if that's what you think, you probably not understand this even if I go into the deets of explaining this to you. That wasn't called for. Oh, so you think I'm a dummy? Nah, you're the one that's thinking I am in fact the dummy, wasn't it? Ah, oh, forget it. Ayase, still sulking, ran into the railroad crossing. 
Clack, clack, clack. Then the crossing gate slowly went down, as if drawing a line to separate the world between us. And it was at that time where I... Eh? Uh, what? Is something wrong? We're gonna be a real bad spot if you don't hurry up! Uh, um, no, no, my bicycle stuck. Like, my front wheels got caught in the gutter. Um, Ibakun, could you help me, uh... Before I realized it, my body subconsciously sprang forward. I leapt towards the boundary that separated both our worlds. Eh? Uh, yeah! Sorry for grabbing your thighs without saying a word. I mean, you're in a real pinch. If you ask me, I really wanted to just run for it and leave the bicycle there, but after hearing she poured half a year of savings into this, there's really no way I'd ditch it all the way back there. Ugh, crap. So heavy. That's really rude. I'm not heavy in the slightest. I'm just perfectly average. No, not referring to that. Could you stop squirming for a moment? Your face is even blushing red. You're just making things real hard for me. Whew, a hair's breadth, we'd be a goner. Ugh, I'm beat. Uh, um, Ibakun. You okay? Yes, I'm okay, but look, over there, honestly, I wanted you to press that emergency button. Ah, uh, things went so fast, I even forgot there was that button. If I did, the warning light would shine bright red, alerting the train driver of any accident that might have occurred. Yeah, you are right. Sorry. Obviously, that's the first thing any sane person do. My head went all blank there for a second. Um, don't be. I'm really glad you saved me back there. I owe you my thanks. Eh, don't mention it. Eh? What's the matter? I was surprised to see that the usual cheery Ayase had tears flowing down from her cheeks. I should be the one asking that! Why are you crying? Uh, am I crying? Huh? Ayase's petite body trembled. Seeing her like this, probably that fear she felt earlier finally all caught up to her. Ayase slumped against the floor and was wailing so hard. As the train completely passed, Ayase's sobs echoed throughout the serene night. So, you finally calmed down? Sorry for making you worry. Eh, I'm fine. So, what's up with the sudden tears? Was that scary? I mean, there's that too, but I'm just real ashamed of myself. You're ashamed? I got stuck in the gutter, got real angry, and then ended up being rescued in the end. That was totally lame of me. Jeez, lame? <laughs> well, you're not completely wrong there. Ugh, you're such a real jerk, Hybakun. By the way, so yeah, I wanted to be an athletic trainer in the future. What are you blurting out all of a sudden? That was the reason why I quit playing. You wanted to know, right? Seems like I was pretty far from the average individual since I was little. While everyone longed to be a Power Ranger, I, on the other hand, yearned to be a side character who got them heroes' backs. This hasn't changed till I grew up. In my own eyes, I kind of found those people who supported players way cooler than the players themselves. So that's how my story goes. Why I wanted to be a manager rather than an athlete. Oh, so like, does an athletic trainer make sure the athletes are in top shape? I mean, treat their injuries maybe so support them in a day-to-day -day basis to boot competing with someone was not really my kind of thing instead i want to be someone who can cheer on someone who's doing their best now tell me i say so just a manager what you said earlier but for me it's because i'm the manager and being one is just totally awesome is that weird of course, being an athlete is really cool too, but being someone who gives all their best just to support and protect these players, they surely aren't losing to them if we are talking about pure awesomeness, right? Ugh, turns out that was really lame of me. Seriously lame. Oh, I did in fact see you once compete at a match, Hypokun. That was back in middle school. You were really cool during that time. 
You simply stood out and stole the spotlight across the court. In fact, I yearned to be like you. So the reason why I even chose this high school was because I heard that here was your dream school. Eh? Uh, seriously? Is that it? Yes. Honestly, it was all for that. But I was left disappointed after enrolling here. I mean, like you quitting as a player and all that stuff. But still, that was really lame of me misunderstanding you. How totally cool of you, Hypokun! Just like back then. Nope, even better! Yep, you might even be way cooler now compared to when you were an athlete. Nah, I don't think so. No, like, for real. You think so? Yes, I truly believe so. Somehow things got kind of awkward for me, and I wasn't able to look at Ayase straight in her eye. But I guess the same went for Ayase. I got a glimpse from my side that her ears went all red. Plus, the way she fumbled over her words seemed strange to me. So, I noticed a few things after that happened. For one, I seem to have gotten a little closer to her. I guess they kind of softened up her attitude towards me, I'll tell that. Maybe pulling her out of that pinch made me her savior or something to that effect. But of course, I wasn't demanding any sort of favor just because of that. Besides, she somewhat seemed to get nervous whenever she's talking to me, and that can get awkward at times, too. Um, so, Hybakun. Yeah, yeah, say? I have these two favors to ask of you. I'm all ears as long as it's doable for me. Really? So, like, um, I want you to call me on a first name basis, and. On a first name basis? Would Rinkasan be good enough? Yep! Oh, right. Also, you can drop the honorifics, too. Got it. So, Rinka. Yes! Uh, this is kind of awkward for me. Could you at least call me by my first name, too? Really? Yay! Okay, then, Sotakun. And if you could just casually drop off the kun part, too? And th that's still a bit too awkward for me. I just simply can't. Look, who's saying that? But, okay, maybe try that little by little. By the way, and that other thing you wanted from me? I want you to keep me company for today's practice, too. Pretty please? Oh, so that's what this is all about. Sure, I won't mind. Thanks. Wow, Rinka, you're really fired up for these practices, huh? I mean, it's because you have my back, right, Sodakun? Huh? And you're even willing to support and cheer on each one who's doing their best, that's why. I want to dish out my bestest, too, so that you'll be cheering on and rooting for me. So that's it. I want to be someone of worth. Hope we'll get along, not just now, but for a very, very long time. Upon hearing these, my heart throbbed really fast. I had this hunch, a feeling that I'll dedicate my life rooting for this girl. It was a similar feeling back then when I was setting up tosses for our team's aches. Like, imbibing that feeling of trust and confidence. However, this was a bit different. This one's more on the sweeter side. Bit of feverish sensation. And it would take some time before I truly knew what this feeling was. I guess we'll save this story for another time. The weather's so nice today. <sighs> You seem tired. How much longer is it going to take to get there? We've got an hour to go. You can get some sleep if you're tired. I wouldn't want to bore you to death. I'd rather have you feeling fresh and energized when we get there. Besides, you're the boss of me during this trip. Don't mind me. Thanks, man. I'll just get a bit of rest and I'll be right back with you. Three hours had passed since I got on this train with my best friend, Shin. We were off to visit some hot springs in the countryside. To explain why I'm even on this trip, I need to go a week back in time. Hey, wanna break up? I was suddenly dumped by the girl that I'd been living with for three years, and the worst part is that she did it with ease. I thought she was joking at first and laughed it off, but I found out she was serious when I came home the next day to find that all of her belongings had disappeared. 
I was hurt. Very, very badly hurt. I took three days off of work, and I lost a few pounds of weight in a matter of days. After seeing me like this, Shin asked me to come on a trip with him, probably to make me feel better. It's a short trip over the weekend. You might find someone even better on this trip! I don't have any hopes for whatever he's saying, but I just wanted to take my mind off of reality. So I decided to come with him onto the trip. <sighs> what a power nap. So where are we going before we check into the hotel? I let Shin make all of the decisions for this trip, so I know virtually nothing about the schedule. Taku, I need to apologize about something to you. Hmm? What is it? I just got a call from my workplace that there's an emergency that they need my help with. So I need to get to the hotel and work on it right away. So that means... I'll carry all of our luggage to the hotel, so you can have fun walking around the city, alright? Wait, but I can just go to the hotel with you. It's fine. I'll get distracted if you're there anyways. What do you mean, distracted? I forgot to tell you, but the place we're staying at is actually a client of the company I work at. We hosted a contest for modern artworks in this town, and there's going to be an awards ceremony for top candidates. So my senior colleagues just called to tell me that I should go and greet my co-workers if I'm near the hotel. Is that even allowed? So I'm sorry, but I can't be with you for the day. But don't worry, I'll meet up with you by dinner. But what should I do while you're gone? Like I said, just go around town. I'm sure there's a bunch of things to do since this place is a tourist spot. Why don't you go take a look at the clock that we set right by this place? It's the winner of the contest, so I'm sure it'll be worth it. Oh crap, I need to go! Bye! Wait, Shin! I'll repay you for this somehow! Don't worry! After leaving that message, Shin left for work, leaving me all alone in an unknown place. I guess I should go look at the clock he was talking about then, I told myself, and left the train station. I haven't seen such a blue sky in a while. The painfully vibrant sunlight signaled a perfect day for sightseeing. That must be it. The clock was set right in front of the station, and the design was agreeably nice. So much so, that even a guy like me, with no artistic talent, was able to identify it. The first thought that came to mind when I saw it was, this looks exactly how a child would design their dream clock. Right by the clock was a young lady who had a camera in her hands, taking pictures of it from all different angles. The reason she caught my eye was because she was noticeably beautiful. Or maybe it was because she seemed like she was having so much fun. But then the next moment... <coughs> the lady was so caught up in finding a good angle that she didn't notice a small step on the ground and fell right on her butt. She must have hurt her ankle because she stayed down on the ground for a while. Hey, are you okay? Uh, huh? Oh, yes. Thank God. Do you need a hand? Yes, please. Thank you. This was the first time I met with Mako, the artist. You really didn't have to buy this for me. It's fine. I saw you holding your ankle. Are you okay? Yes. I'm feeling a lot better now, thanks to you. Oh, I've forgotten to introduce myself. My name is Takuto Kobayakawa. Nice to meet you. Mr. Kobayakawa? Yes? Oh, um, nothing. You can call me Mako. Nice to meet you. Mako? Yes, it's my fake name. A fake name? Well, yes, but... No, it's my pen name. Pen name? What for? I work as a part-timer on a daily basis, but sometimes I do art projects as an artist. The clock that we were just looking at was actually designed by me. What? Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I heard from a friend that it was chosen as the winner of the contest. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> You're the first artist I've ever met. Really? Yeah. I've always wondered who's behind the artworks, but I guess this is my first encounter. Really? Your first time? Hmm? Oh, yes. 
There aren't many artistic people like you around me. Hmm... I see. Well, I'm glad to have met you. Oh, yes. I'm glad to have met you, too. Have you ever had someone tell you that you have a... unique personality? Of course I do! I'm a creator, so not being normal is what I'm all about! <sighs> That's funny, I've even had the boy of my first love tell me that I'm kinda weird. <laughs> really? That must have hurt. <laughs> not really. It's what motivated me to keep expressing myself through my artwork. So, I guess I really am kind of weird. Being motivated by being called weird. <laughs> I don't know what that boy thought, but I don't think you're weird. I just think you're unique. In a good way, though. <laughs> being unique means that you have something that no one else has. And I really like that about you. D did you just say you like me? Are you asking me out or what? Not in that kind of way. Oh? Uh, not in that kind of way. Oh, I see. Well, no, but of course I think you're a nice girl, and... I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course I wouldn't expect you to be asking me out right now. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I think I got a notification for work. Uh, what should I do? Is something wrong? I was planning to meet a client from my work today, but they just cancelled on me out of nowhere. I guess I don't have anything to do for the next four hours, then. Hey, um, if that's the case... Yes? Could I properly ask you out right now? Uh huh? Uh, um, uh... So, uh, that means... Yeah, I wanted to ask if I could spend the rest of the day with you today. To be honest with you, the friend that I came here with actually cancelled on our trip after we got here. So I don't have any plans for the rest of the day either. Oh, you scared me! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So what do you say? Of course, I'd love to. Great! I'm so excited! So, where should we go first? I'm actually pretty hungry right now. Well then, would you like to get something to eat? Yes, please. Oh, this is amazing! Do you eat sweets for lunch on a daily basis? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that most people don't eat sweets as meals. I just love them so much. <laughs> it's okay though, I love sweets too. They have some fried chicken over there. Would you like to go get some? Nothing beats freshly made fried chicken. Whoa! You ate it in two bites? Hmm? Yeah, didn't you? I'm pretty sure you're the unique one here. Mm, so sweet. You really, really like your sweets, don't you? <laughs> Do you want some? Here you go! No thank you. I'm eating a dumpling right now. You're an amateur when it comes to eating sweets, huh? You eat that salty treats first, and then sweet treats, and then the salty treats, and voila! There you have an infinite spiral of goodness! Now, open up! Uh... Good boy! See, that was good, wasn't it? It was delicious! My turn then, uh... Huh? I want a piece of your dumpling, silly. Oh, sorry. Here you go. Mm, oh, that's so good. Let's go bathe together when we're done eating this. What? What did you say? <sighs> this is nice, don't you think? You mean the foot baths when you say bathe together? Of course. Did you expect something else? Hmm? Of course not. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Sure. You tease me too much. Can we please talk about something else? Sure. You said you were a system engineer earlier. Is it a difficult job to handle? A lot of engineers have it hard, especially when they're just starting off. When I first started working, my pay was lower than a part-time worker at a grocery store. 
Really? I almost quit right away, but my peers and seniors were all very kind to me, and that really helped me stay focused through the hard times. It always comes down to who you're surrounded with, huh? May I ask why you became an artist? I'm really curious about how you ended up aspiring to become one. Me? Yeah. <sighs> it's nothing interesting. Basically the same reason as to why a teenage boy starts practicing the guitar. So? Yes. My first love back in elementary school complimented an artwork of mine. And I became super invested. Back when Mako was a little kid, she would often move around schools because of her father's job, and she couldn't make many friends. Mako eventually became afraid of the inevitable farewells that would come after every friendship. The distance between her introverted self and the classmates became larger each time she moved. That was her whole childhood. Until one day, a little boy complimented her clay house that she was building an arts and crafts class. Whoa! That's amazing! N not really. No! It's amazing! Why don't you show it off? That's weird! Hey everyone! This new kid is amazing! Uh, um... Come on! Tell everyone how you made this! Please? Oh, sure. Um... Yeah! Thanks! It was a subtle event through any other person's eyes, but to Mako, it was the day that she finally became a little closer to her classmates for the first time. The time to say goodbye came as always, but this time, she was more thankful for being able to meet everyone than sad saying farewell. This memory was like a shining star in her dark childhood, and it helped her throughout the rest of it. An experience that convinced her to pursue her dream as an artist. Whenever Mako looks back at this memory, she thinks to herself, That was my first love. Now, your turn! Me? You made me tell you about my first love. It isn't fair unless you tell me about yours too. Hmm, I don't have anything to hide, but I don't think I remember who my first love was. Really? Isn't that the case for most people? I'm confident that you're a rare case, Mako. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm such a weirdo. You like calling yourself a weirdo, huh? <laughs> How'd you know? I had lots of fun today. Thank you, Takuto. That's my line. Thank you, Mako. I guess this is goodbye then? I guess so. To finish off the day, we came to see the clock that Mako had designed one last time. She told me that I could see a surprise if I went to see it ten minutes before her train departed from the station. Right as we approached the clock, music started to sound. Oh, right on time! Whoa! Are the figures there supposed to resemble your story from elementary school? You're a good guesser, huh? The theme for this clock is reunion. Whoa! They're adults now! It's just like swapping the first two puppets with these two, but I tried to make it so that I could tell the story of two individuals reuniting. I love it! This is amazing! You really think so? Thank you! <laughs> the two of us continued to watch the puppets in awe. Is that your train? Yep. I guess this is really goodbye then. I really want to thank you so much for today. I had an amazing time too. Thank you. So I was wondering if I could ask you a favor. Huh? Would you maybe like to trade numbers? W with me? Of course with you! I had so much fun today, and I really needed it. I want to see you again. Hmm, well, what should I do? Pretty please? Hmm, I guess I could listen to return favor then. Really? Of course, I was just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. However... However? I'll give it to you when we meet again. Huh? Oh, uh, whoops. Uh, this is my train. Wait! Don't worry. We'll meet again. As those words left her mouth, the doors closed. She slowly began drifting away. Further and further away, 
leaving me on the platform of the station. What's up? Sorry for today. Are you all set with work? Yeah. Is something wrong? What do you mean? You've got an odd look on your face. You know how you told me that I might be able to meet someone new this morning? Yeah. Wait. I think I've met that someone, Shin. Whoa. But I don't even know her real name, or who she really is. Takuto. It didn't work out, huh? What? Nothing. Screw relationships, man! Let's drink our worries away tonight! All drinks are on me! After breaking my heart once again in a single day, our trip reached its end. Even though my heart is wounded right now, wounds turn to scabs, and scabs turn to scars, and scars fade away, until you forget that anything ever happened. It's already been two months, man! Why don't you look for another fish in the open sea? I just can't find anyone. What do you think reunions like this are hosted for? You can find someone right now! I'm confident that that's not why they host these. So you're just gonna give up like that? You never know. The girl of your first love might be here, you know? That reminds me. Do you remember who your first love is? I'm pretty sure it was my caretaker in preschool. And yours was the transfer student, right? Huh? Yeah, I remember you falling in love at first sight, but you were too shy to say hi. So you ended up calling her a weirdo in art class. But I guess the girl didn't take you as a weirdo at all. Speak of the devil. Hey, Nukumizu! Come over here! Takuto wants to talk with you! You two seem like you're having a very interesting conversation. May I join? What? Here's your first love, Takuto. The girl you fell in love with at first sight during elementary school. But wait, what? Mako? Why are you here? See? I told you we'd meet again. Please, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Makoto Nukumizu. And I'm an artist. And apparently, your first love. Nice to meet you. Miss Mako, I'm so sorry for not being able to take you to the station. Did my replacement do a good job in escorting you for the day? I've already received an apology for that, so you are forgiven. Besides, I was able to reunite with my first love because of you. So thank you. Their cheesy exchange of lines made it obvious that there was something fishy going on here. That's when I realized that since Shin's company hosted the competition, it wouldn't be odd for the two to have met in advance to plan something. You tricked me?! <laughs> Come on, you should be thankful. I set up a surprise date with your first love for you! Don't get mad at Nukumizu, though. She found out about my master plan afterwards, too. I was surprised when I found you bummed out and alone at the station when I went to pick you up, though. That was a bit of payback for not remembering me, even though I remembered everything about you over all these years. That was very cruel of you. <laughs> but now that I've gotten my payback, Mr. Takuto Kobayakawa. Yes? <laughs> Don't be so upset. Fine. I forgive you. I'm just glad I was able to meet you again. Now that we've finally found each other again, wouldn't you like to make sure that we never lose one another again? At that moment, the clock in the restaurant went off. It was like the universe was celebrating me and Makoto meeting again. This is how our story began. Big bro! Come out and play! <laughs> so who's this cheery gal entering my room? That's Shizuku Minamo, my sister who's a year younger than me. See, she's just this lovely sister of mine, but we're not living in the same place at the moment. The reason for this is because I'm now attending college and living on my own. Shizuku, how many times have I told you this? You can't just suddenly barge into my room, remember? Huh? But I just called you, like, a little while ago. Eh, not that it changes the fact that you did force your way through here. Oh my, it's not that big a deal. Cut some slack for your pretty sister, will ya? Man, sure, whatever. <laughs> Thanks. Aw, you're such a sweetie, big bro. Um, also, I kind of have something to tell you. 
What's it this time? <laughs> Lucky, I brought my friend over here. Uh, uh hi there. <gasps> She's a coo, are you out of your mind? What makes you think that bringing your friend to your brother's room, mind you, who's living alone, makes that a good idea? Are you insane? Hmm, you got any probs with this? Um, as long as you're not thinking of doing something weird. I don't see any problems with this, I mean. This girl, she's reading me like an open book! Oh, where are my manners? So this girl is Mana Hakoromo, and we've been best friends since high school. Same with yours, Shizuku? I guess that means an all-girls high school. <laughs> yep, yep. Like, she's gonna attend college next year, but has spent all her life surrounded by girls. I mean, since she was little. That's why she's sort of awkward around boys. So now that's out there, here's where you come in, big bro. You're gonna act like a vaccine, so she'll be immune to such awkwardness and… Same as before, huh? Dude, you're still spouting nonsense. Aw, pretty please, big bro, for my bestie. Man, do I have any other choice? Uh, Just what am I supposed to do with this sheltered girl? Huh? She suddenly hid herself the moment our eyes met. Seriously, I have no clue how to approach this fiasco at all. Well, I mean, she's cute. Oh, by the way, you already grabbed something for lunch? Not yet. Uh, didn't you just barge in here without calling me first? Oh, well. In that case, this Shizuka-chan might as well serve up a healthy home-cooked meal for you guys. Really? Weren't you bad at cooking, Shizuku? Uh, nothing's gonna taste bad as long as it's made with love. In other words, it's gonna be on you if it tastes bad, aka you don't love me that much. That's harsh. Oops, that reminds me we haven't eaten anything yet. So, are we gonna dine out? And simply toss away what you said earlier? Mm, I'll feel guilty if my poor bro's stomach gets upset over my cooking. How about we keep our mouths zipped and go with my suggestion of eating outside, no? Uh, sure. Uh, just to put it out there, I wasn't really planning on eating your home-cooked meal in the first place. Ha! Serving up an ice-cold dish right there. Uh, seriously, big bro? What do you want me to do, Shizuku? Just kidding! Okay, uh, seriously, enough chit-chat. Hurry, I'm starving right now! Oh, this brat, spoiled as ever. Okay, uh, what do you want to eat? Hmm... Aichan, what do you want to eat? Anything will do. Right. Uh, by the way, you have yet to try ramen. Like, you haven't eaten them yet, right? Uh, mm. That settles it. Then ramen we go. You on board with that, big bro? Of course. So, she's yet to eat ramen. Wow. Were her parents so overprotective or something? Was she raised up like a little princess? Oh, so, um, my credit card's no good. Hmm? I can. Um, don't you bring cash along when going out? Uh, yes. Uh, what should I do? No worries, I can cover you. Either way, I'm paying for Shizuku too, so. Oh, uh, really? Yay! Super thanks! Man, you're shameless. I bet you were planning this from the very start. Yep. Jeez, wonder who raised you all spoiled and pampered like this? Huh, <laughs> isn't that like you, big bro? Like mom and dad's both working together, and since then you've been in charge of me, remember? Yep, it's my fault she's living like this till now, since I kinda babied her. Really, I created this monster out of my sister. Oh well, I'ma cut her some slack as she's oh so adorable! Oh well, anywho's, I got you covered, Hakoromo. So no need to be shy whatsoever, okay? Is that really okay? Oh, rest assured, it's alright. I mean, Big Bro's even earning a lot from his part-time job, so... I want to deny that accusation so bad, but Hakoromo's just gonna feel bad over me treating her if I blurt that out. Shizuku makes it seem like I do earn a lot of money from my part-time job, but not really. Still, I have no other choice. I'll just sit back and watch this all play out. Wow, so this is... a ramen? Ooh, looks pretty delish, right? Yes! Dude, her eyes are sparkling! Oh, come on, that's adorable! 
The moment Hakoromo ate the ramen, it was like she was in the seventh heaven. Or how should I put this? It's like she's a small critter, yep, that she's just really, really cute. I sorta of got it now as to why Shizuku hangs around with her. So, after that... Big Bro's room's pretty boring. I mean, there's practically nothing there. So how about we go somewhere? Lies, I have plenty of video games, remember? Yeah, as if Mana-chan's gonna do that. There's like, literally nothing for her there. Huh, then tell me, why did you bring her to my room in the first place, you cheeky brat? Hakuromo, so what are your hobbies? I mean, what do you usually do? Um, I'm not that really into games. I usually just spend my time studying, uh, learning stuff. Whoa, man, it's kind of tough being a rich kid, huh? And that's why I promised you we'd do something fun, right? Shizuku, do you really think that bringing her to your brother's place was the right idea all along? Oh, this is all for social studies, you see. Ah, yeah, we're staying at your place for this night too, so capiche? Right, you're gonna stay at my... No, what'd you say? <laughs> and Shizuku, what did you say right now? I said we're gonna stay at your place. I mean, do I really have any choice about you, Shizuku, but uh, Kuromo, nah, that's a bad idea! Remember, um, as long as you're not thinking of doing something weird, we should be fine, right? That's not the point here! She's gonna be alright, as if a good-for-nothing bro like you do something, right? There we go, I knew it! Just what kind of brother do you think I am? A kind of sweet brother, likes dawdling, so I wouldn't dare to lay a hand on a girl. <laughs> One who's good for nothing. Man, that is a fact. Ugh, no denying that. That is a fact? Yay! That settles it! Mana-chan's staying at your place for the night. No buts or ifs. Huh, so I really raised Shizuku to be this cheeky brat. Still, the fact is that she's still my adorable sister, and that's that, I guess. Big bro, um, I'm really sorry. Well, Shizuku had gone answering to a call of nature, Akuromo suddenly approached me. Up until now, she wasn't very keen on talking to me, and that's why this came off as a surprise. Uh, you don't need to apologize, Akuromo. Is there something you really need to apologize for in the first place? Like... Shizuku asked a favor from you, to help me overcome the awkwardness I feel around boys, but honestly, it was me who asked that. Shizuku said her brother was pretty nice, and I shouldn't be worried about anything, and promised to introduce me to you. She even forced you to do all this, all for my sake, and so I hope you won't get mad at Shizuku over this. Akuromo? Rest assured, I won't get mad at her over something silly like this. Uh... Besides, I'm already used to her behaving like a spoiled child. Look, I'm just happy that that girl can finally be of some use to someone. Like you, Hakutomo. That girl can be really needy at times, believe me. Make sure you count on her at times if you need anything, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. I had my doubts at first. I didn't know that we would talk this casually. That was unexpected. Also, I guess she also has her dad, right? Meaning she's probably not that awkward with guys to a certain extent. And if that's the case, it might be a good idea to keep an appropriate distance with her first, and stir up a convo closer step by step later on. But honestly, that Shizuku helping another person? No way. You've really grown these past few months, huh? Sorry for making you wait! What were you guys gossiping about? Wait, did you even have a proper convo? Shizuku? Shizuku, I'm so proud of you! Uh, wait a sec, big bro? There, there. Ugh, gosh, stop that! What are you doing, weirdo? Jeez, no need to get so embarrassed about it. I'm not embarrassed, I'm mad right now! I mean, Mana-chan's still here! Ugh, could you just please stop? Oh, so you want to move to a different spot with no Mana-chan? I wasn't implying that or anything. Like, stop patting my head, seriously. <laughs> nah, come on, we're siblings, right? No need to be shy about it. Exactly! We're siblings and it makes it more embarrassing. Ugh! These two, they're like two peas in a pod. 
Later that night... Are you guys insane? We can't be sharing a room! Um, as long as you're not thinking of doing something weird, yada yada yada. Man, at least finish what you're saying. And to make things clear, I'm not planning on doing anything weird, okay? Um, hear me out. So, this bed, uh, I think it'd be better if Shizuku-chan shares the bed with you, I guess. I'll be fine with sleeping on the floor. No, no, do you really think I'm gonna allow that? Still, are you two okay with that? I mean, I sleep in that thing every day, and so... Oh, you mean this one? Yes, I'm okay with this. Like, uh, this scent. It's sort of comforting. Yeah. M uh, Monachan! Whoa, <laughs> I'd never imagine you being this straightforward. Huh? Uh, no, 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 I didn't mean it that way! Huh? You mean what? In what way? <laughs> oh, Manachan, what were you just thinking about? Uh, stop that, Shizuko-chan! Oh, you're such a bully! Like, I'm not bullying you. I just thought you looked oh so adorable back there. Oh, no, just stop teasing me! I'm not teasing you, okay? Just telling the truth here. <laughs> right, big bro? Why are you passing this on to me? Huh? <laughs> Sheesh, what are you blushing for? Aww. Big bro. Oh, don't tell me. Do you have a thing for Mana-chan? Uh, it's not being silly. In the first place, isn't Mana-chan still in high school? Well, she just had her birthday. Like, she's now 18, a fully grown adult, you know? Um, in the first place? Like, aren't you just a year older than her? That isn't funny, you jerk! Stop that! You're making all this weird. It doesn't help, too, that we're sleeping in the same room, too, so yeah. <laughs> Oopsies, my bad. Can't you take a joke? Uh, also, it's already this late. We better get some shut-eye ASAP. Oh, doing things as we please, aren't we? Uh Before I knew it... Hakutomo was already staring towards my direction. Our eyes met, and things got pretty awkward. Okay then, um, good night, big bro. Uh, yeah, good night, Hakutomo. Yeah, so, I was right. Things did get really awkward. And because of this, we just bid our good nights and headed straight by the comfort of our mattresses. Man, she's a cool. Why'd you have to make things this awkward? What the heck were you thinking? After that day, Shizuku bought Hakutomo with her for a sleepover during the weekends. It became a thing. According to her, graduation was approaching fast around the corner, and there wasn't enough time left. Desperate times call for desperate measures, she says. Well, I still thought her parents were pretty lenient on this. Hakutomo herself doesn't seem to be too phased about this, and so I just let them be. Then one day, this happened. G good afternoon. Huh? Where's Shizuku? Hakutomo came by for a sleepover, just the same with the previous weekends. However, Shizuku was nowhere to be seen. Maybe Hakutomo was just swinging by at this moment? Um, so Shizuku said I kinda need to do this sleepover by myself for today. Huh? This can't be real! I mean, seriously? I guess so. No, this isn't gonna work, Hakutomo. You should have gave her a clear-cut no! Look, I'ma be honest with you. If there's someone who should be looking out for yourself, it's nobody but yourself, you hear me? I'm really sorry. No, oh, no, no, I'm not blaming you or anything, okay? What I'm trying to say is that it's kinda dangerous staying with a guy all by yourself. I think it's best if you avoid putting yourself in such a situation, right? But if it's you, Big Pro, uh, I mean, you're just really nice, and I feel safe knowing that. But not that it changes the fact that I'm a guy. I'm glad to hear that, but still, it kind of puts me on the spot. First things first, let me call Shizuku for a minute. You just sit right there for a moment. Hello? Don't you hello me? Man, what the heck were you thinking, Shizuku? Hmm? Oh, grats, big bro! Finally, you can have a sleepover party all alone with Mana-chan. What do you mean, grats? What you're doing is just straight messed up! 
Aren't you feeling guilty about her, Karamo, leaving her alone like this? Um, no. I mean, she wanted that in the first place. Huh? God, do you really believe that, oh, I want to cure this fear of man thingy, so I'll do a sleepover with Big Bro to cure it stuff? What the heck do you mean by that? Who knows? Maybe you can sort that out with Mana-chan. Okay then, good luck, you dummy dum dum. Shizuku then immediately hung up after leaving me with those words. Uh, really? Could this really mean? Um, I can just go back home if I'm just bothering you, so... Uh, d yeah, no, nah, you could stay. So, yep, in the meantime, you could just go inside. Man, sending her away would just be pretty awful. And so I asked Hakutomo to come inside my place. Uh, so, Hakutomo, can I ask you one thing? Yes, uh, sure. Right, Hakutomo, uh, have I met you before by any chance? Uh, like, before you first came here? Did shizuku chan say something to you? Nah, Shizuku hasn't said a single thing about this. She says it's better that I ask you, Hakutomo, and that's it, really. Oh, I see. Actually, I've already met you before once. Huh, right. Um, so where was it? Like, it was back then during the school festival at your high school? It was a year ago. I kind of tagged along with Shizuku-chan for your school festival. Wow, that Shizuku didn't even say a single word about how she was supposed to visit our school festival. Shizuku did say we were supposed to visit their incognito, and so... Then... Uh... I got swallowed fully by the crowd and lost sight of Shizuku-chan. It was my first time coming to your school, too, and so... I wasn't sure where to go and was completely lost. And during that time... I thought it was really kind of you, as you approached me, big bro. Did something like that really happen? Right, meeting a real beauty like Hikotomo would surely not escape my memory. However, she did say that I talked to her. Does that mean that I totally forgot about her? Sorry, I just can't seem to remember the- Oh, here. How about this? As she said that, she reached for her glasses from her purse and put those on. Huh, that clears things up. Now I can see why. Now I remember it. I did meet her that day. Really? You remembered me? Yep, you kind of had this long hair during the school festival, right? Did you have them cut? Yes, Shizuku-chan gave me some pointers on how to look chic. Even right now, I'm just wearing contact lenses. Yeah, no wonder. That girl who I knew went like this donned long hair, wore glasses, and was plain looking. Her looks now were a mile away from back then, and was the only reason I wasn't able to recognize her from the onset. I felt really queasy back at the school festival, but you were just so kind to me. Oh, I, I could never have guessed that that guy I met back then was, in fact, Shizuka-chan's brother. Like, Shizuka-chan kind of showed me your photo on her phone just recently. That was when I realized it was really you. And then, yep, Shizuku kind of bugged ya, and then got all nosy about this, huh? Not really. I mean, she only did this for me, as her friend. But more importantly, I'm really sorry for lying about this. No, I just mean given the circumstance, I kind of understand. Plus, I'm just glad that we even sort of got to know each other more through these sleepovers. Well, so could this mean that you're okay if I start going out with you? Uh, really? You're okay dating someone like me? I'll be blunt right now. Each time you were here for a sleepover, I thought that you were just pretty adorable, Hakaramo. In other words, I'll be one happy guy if we start dating. Uh, well then, I hope we'll get along, Ryoya. Yep, I want to do lots of fun things, that's for sure, Mana-chan. You see, thanks to my scheming sister, we were now able to start dating. Whilst my days were going to be filled with this cheeky, annoying sister of mine around, on the other hand, I now have this cute girlfriend. And yep, we're going to be real lovey-dovey from here on. I am Haruki Nakamura. I just left my white-collar job for a startup company related to web design. Right now, I have a trusty assistant working alongside me. Have things calmed down a little? 
Here, I made some coffee. How about you take some break? Thanks, Sakakibara. Here's Emmy Sakakibara. She's currently in senior high school. She's the one who helps me with our company work. An overall kind and really dedicated girl. However... That's just the two of us here. At least you can call me Emmy. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Emmy. Haruki. Uh, yes? <laughs> just felt like saying your name. Jeez, she's so cute! And no, what I meant was, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be like this right now. By the way, here's how my daily grind felt like a year ago. Two days pulling all-nighters. I'm at my wit's end. Crap, I'm gonna pass out. After graduating from a vocational school, I soon entered this company, Danten Inc., where I was assigned to be a part of the development department's web design team. The company is known for being toxic, and I soon became a full-pledged zombie after toiling my days off there. Well, what do we have here? Should I rat on you and tell the HR? Uh, Director Akutsu? My boss caught me dozing off for a moment. According to my director, such shoddy work attitude at work has a bearing on one's salary assessment. My apologies, Director. I haven't gotten enough rest during these past few days and I wasn't feeling well. Uh? So, um, that's why. I'm truly sorry for this, but would it be possible to clock out early for today? Ah, uh, yes, you want to clock out early. Nakamura, my boy, are you familiar with the theory of evolution? I yes. Those only fit to serve our society are the ones who survive. They have no need for these useless ones. It's all about that! Uh, huh? Survival of the fittest. That's what work's all about! There he goes again, needlessly bringing up his jock days. See, boy, when I was a youngin', there was a time that I haven't slept for a month! Dude, there's no way in hell that's true. So something like feeling sleepy while at work? Yeah, that won't do. Yeah, but you don't need to worry about it anymore, as you can stop coming in starting tomorrow. What? I must send you all the needed ducks through snail mail. If you get me, boy, then you can go ahead and leave early. Go on. Uh, understood. So I'm getting fired, huh? I feel lonely at the moment, but a part of me feels kind of relieved hearing this. Phew, but what should I do starting tomorrow? You there. Y yes You see, I'm looking for the development department's web design team at the moment, so... Hmm? Just head straight down the end of this corridor. Right. Thank you. Whoa, she's really beautiful. Huh? She looks familiar. Must have seen her somewhere. Oh well. Good morning, Akutsu. My, my, if it isn't Ito! And on which matters could have possibly brought you here? Oh, I wanted to ask for a redesign for our subsidiary company's homepage. Why, the pleasure's all mine! I'm open for consultations, as always. I'll entertain you. See, this homepage we have here, I believe you're the one handling it. Right, Akutsu? Right, I believe so. I want to speak with the web designer who made this, and so... Uh, web designer? Damn it! Nakamura's the one who designed this homepage! Uh, please, uh, allow me to explain this for you. Oh, really? Wow, thanks. So first, we have these number of impressions over here, as well as the number of clicks, like so. This conversation rate. I would like to know how they are all related to each other. Impre... Converse... Uh, oh, right. Uh, let me see. Uh. Look, get to it already. No point talking to you as you've just completely wasted my time. Like I'm afraid that you seem to have not a single clue about what you're talking about. We're done here. Uh, my apologies. I'll reschedule another visit. Let me talk to someone who clearly knows what they're talking about the next time I come here. Oh, damn me! Why am I buttering up to a prima donna like this? At the same time, I was at the station's platform where... Job hunting and then working, working, huh? 
Man, I just don't feel like doing anything anymore. I stood there pondering about such things while waiting for my train to come, when... Um, excuse me? Is something wrong? Suddenly, this girl talked to me. A, a high school student who I had no recollection of whatsoever meeting with. Did I possibly do something wrong? Please close your eyes. Huh? What's with the sudden request? Whatever. Just do what I say. And so I closed my eyes. Just as she said, stood still. <laughs> what the... Then I landed hard on my butt. My cheeks felt a stinging sensation, and for the moment I realized that I've just been slapped hard. Even these people around us who were waiting for the train started to clamor. Could you please follow me to the train attendant's office? Uh, I mean, look. Really? He's got some nerve doing that right by the train tracks. That's disgusting. All it took was this straightforward phrase from her, one which was convincing enough for me to be completely misunderstood by everyone. Feeling bad, being slapped, and on top of all these, getting stuck in this awkward atmosphere around me. I should have yelled or something instead of just staring blankly and doing nothing at all. However, all these sent me into a state of utter anxiety. Is she planning to falsely accuse me just to wring some money out of me? Uh, no. Hold on. There should be surveillance cameras right on the train tracks. I reluctantly went to the train attendant's office just so I could prove my innocence. Where... Officer, please. Beat some sense into this guy. Huh? What's the matter? He was staring blankly and was kind of fidgety in front of the train tracks. I mean, I couldn't just... You just can't end your life like that, you know, kiddo? You're still young. There's plenty of opportunities you could turn your life around with. They've somewhat misread my actions for a completely different thing. There's no lying, I did experience a hell of a misfortune while at this company, but really, I wouldn't go as far as to commit something like that. And so, I just explained what happened until earlier, one by one where I did finally clear any sort of misunderstanding with these guys. I see. You've got a really tough day, huh? But hey, wasn't quitting that company you mentioned the right move you made? Yes, so you see, I'm just feeling bad for the moment. I wasn't able to load off these feelings with someone else until now. Just doing so and chatting about it made me feel a little bit better. As for that high school girl who I spoke with back at the station's attendance office... I'm really, really sorry. That was a total mistake on my part. How embarrassing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Sorry I made you worry. Um, by the way, why did you suddenly slap me? It was kind of to fire you up. Infuse into you that burning, fighting spirit. You Antonio Inoki or something? Well, I guess it's just her way of worrying about someone. So, the next morning, I was able to get back home safely, but I had no recollection about what happened. I woke up in a bed. Wow, when was the last time I slept like a log? Wait, today's a work day? Oh, right, I just got fired. Everything that happened yesterday was really like a dream. Hold on, that high school girl... Good morning. Yeah, morning... Uh huh? The sight of her face suddenly greeted me after waking up. Seeing her shook me up real bad, and when I started to stand up, I hit my head against her forehead. Ouch! That hurts! What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Oh, ouch! I should be the one saying that! And what are you even doing in my room? Plus, what are you even trying to accomplish here? I was just checking if that spot I slapped you was swollen or not. And why are you in my room? You don't remember what happened? My memory's a little bit fuzzy after going back from the station. According to her story, here's what happened. First of all, she's Emi Sakagibara. It seems that my body couldn't keep up any longer the moment I left the station attendant's office. Apparently, she was really worried about me, and so she decided to lend me a shoulder until I safely got back home. She says that I collapsed as soon as we got back to my house. Emmy somewhat managed to carry me all the way up to my bed, but please, stay by my side. Uh? 
probably, after all that happened, took a mental toll on me. Maybe that was the reason that I said such things to her? Yami was kind of confused at first, however, kindly enough, she decided to accompany me until the next morning. So that's what happened. You've seriously helped me a lot. Thanks, really. You even prepared this breakfast for me. Nope, it was nothing special. <laughs> Thanks. Also, this breakfast is really good. Glad you liked it. Uh, by the way, do your parents know about this? I mean, I told them in the meantime I was staying over at my friend's house. Huh? That, just right now. Is she bluffing about something? Um, so, no worries. Uh, right, that's good then. Oh, by the way, your phone has been ringing non-stop since earlier. My phone? Ah, a call from work? My phone was hella littered with a long list of missed calls. You there, Nakamura? You'd better answer your call this instant! Heck, what took you so long? Look, you need to prep things over here or... Uh, prep? Of course! You need to prep them if you're quitting, right? Jeez, look, I'm hanging up! Our conversation was all but one-sided, but I still ended up deciding to go to work for today. Really, you don't need to keep showing up to work for such a company like this. Nah, I really do need to prep things before I go, as they might put some mems in a pinch. I'm telling you, they'll only take advantage of your kindness. Well, I do get that a lot, being wishy-washy. Still, I wasn't so sure why Emmy cared for me so much. That night, after finishing all the prep in lieu of transitioning my work to the director, I finally headed out of the company building where... Oh! Nakamura! Huh? Were you waiting for me this whole time, Emmy-chan? So did things go smoothly? Yeah, I did okay. I rather feel great. Finally, I can taste some freedom. Phew! Good to hear. So, Ami-chan, this is kind of bothering me lately, but why do you feel like caring for me so much? Um, about that. Pretty sure you'll be dishing out your best at work this day too, Dad. Uh-huh. Well then, I'll be off. Actually, my dad was working really hard at this toxic workplace. It was rough seeing him look kind of sick and weary. So I made it a thing to at least put on a cheery face each time he went out for work, however. Things eventually took a toll on him, both mentally and physically. Your dad's good for nothing. Sorry, Emmy. Dad, sorry. Dad really dished out his best at work, as I told him he'll surely be at his 101% each day. And so I kind of pushed him too hard for this one. That time I chanced upon your expression by the platform yesterday reminded me of the times it was the roughest for my dad. He'll end up like my dad if I simply let you be that day. And so I just slapped you without thinking things through. So that's the reason behind that burn and fight in spirit, huh? I'm really sorry for yesterday. Nah, don't sweat yourself about it. Plus, now I know the reason behind all of that. You even fired up my spirits. Probably the reason I'm alive and kicking now. Alive and kicking, huh? So this means you're now capable of doing anything? Yeah, who are you? Huh? Aren't you the one from yesterday? My name's Megatu. I believe you're Haruki Nakamura? I mean, yes, but... I'll be blunt and head straight to my point. So are you up to the task of starting your own business? So, you mean a startup business? Exactly. Do you want to try being a manager of your own? Are you talking about me? But I'm really just, uh... If you're thinking about having problems related to capital, you can be at ease. I'll finance all of your expenses. Really? You would do that just for me? I saw firsthand how you designed homepages. This work of yours is truly splendid. Needless to say, you really caught my attention. Um, pardon me for intruding, but who were you again? Ah! Uh, now I remember you! She's Maggie Toe, 
A businesswoman who's known for being a total knockout and even regularly appears on TV. My, you flatter me. Thanks. You own a number of businesses, right? Yes, 20, more or less. Here's my offer. Let's say I need a homepage design for all the 20 subsidiaries that I own. Then, here's where you fit in as I'll entrust such work to you. What do you say? Well, I mean, that's truly kind of you. What are you gonna do, Nakamura? He's talking about me. I mean, there's really nothing left for me to lose. I guess my only path I have is to keep moving forward. I, I want to take this challenge head on. After that, I exchanged numbers with Ito and I began doing preparations for the startup business. Since then, two weeks have passed ever since receiving the funds from Ito and launching this web design oriented startup business. Ito entrusted me with redesigning the homepage for all these 20 subordinates that she owns, and the work is progressing smoothly. It feels great doing work that you've been entrusted to rather than being bossed around if I do say so. Here's your coffee. Thanks. I know you're all fired up with this, but how about resting for a bit? Yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for your concern. Right, it's better you do so. I'll just head real quick to the post office. In the meantime, catch a little breather, okay? Yep, got it. I'll see you later then. Emmy Chun currently works as my assistant. She seems to be eyeing for part-time work in the meantime, as her dad's not really in top shape to be working. Honestly, that girl's just thoughtful. Like, I might be eating up her time as all she does is worry about me. More so, Emmy still has her hands tied with schoolwork. And so, I've decided to put a job posting online. Let me see, two salary bonuses annually, then no work on weekends, no overtime work. Right, for now, I just made an effort to offer something completely different from the one that I had in Danton. Man, I never could have imagined the day that I'd put so much experience to use that I got from toiling hard at the toxic workplace. We received tons of applications from everyone. Wow, look at all these. Yeah, sifting through all these would be pretty hard. Well, it can't be helped as you gave some favorable terms for them. Huh? What are these? Uh, something wrong? A number of applications were from people I knew back then from Danten. They likely had enough from working in a toxic environment. I made sure to prioritize an interview with all of them. Everyone can relax. This is some kind of a formality rather than holding a stiff group interview. Oh, and is it true that you guys handed in your resignations all at once? Yeah, the company just got worse and worse after you left, Haruki. We talked and agreed that there was no other choice for us but to bail out. Guys, right, I've decided. All of you are now hired. Whoa, really? Thanks. You have no idea what this means to us, Haruki. And while we're at it, could you guys do me a favor and check on the others who haven't decided on their jobs? Our boss was simply the worst. Still, all of us back at Danten were still sort of closely knit friends. And that's why I lent everyone a hand this time around. Plus, each one really excels at what they do. By getting them on board our team, I'm confident that we can pull this off. Afterward, I ended up hiring seven people on a full-time work basis. This decision merited me success. Our team managed to breeze through all 20 homepage designs requested by Etel. Furthermore, we got a steady stream of even more company-related work commissions from Etel. Our schedule was packed, and also we received a number of tasks involving updates for pre-existing homepages. Our company was even successful enough to afford handing out intern bonuses to everyone. Way to go, Nakamura! I heard that everyone's really happy being in a comfortable workplace with a high-paying income. Honestly, all the credit goes to you, Sakakibara. Uh, is something bothering you, Sakakibara? I mean, so this, um, the way you kind of call me... But weren't you the one who suggested this in the first place, that that's how we should call everyone around us? Yep, like, I did say that, but... It'd be nice if you call me Emmy-chan. Just like back then, it was just the two of us. And, um, you could just casually call me Emmy. Drop off that Chan part. 
Huh? I mean, that might be a little, uh... So, yeah, calling her Emmy-chan at least maintains the bare minimum to set boundaries as colleagues. Uh, by the way, speaking of Emmy-chan's dad... His physical health did a 180, and now he's working along with us. Boss, I'm really grateful to be a part of a pleasant workplace like this. <laughs> no, I should be the one thanking you, really. You, along with Emmy, are being great contributors for the team. Isn't this great, Dad? Here, everyone was just really happy working alongside the team members. One day, however, there was this incident which kind of threw a wet blanket over everyone's jolly disposition. It was the day that Director Akutsu marched into the company doors. Nakamura, what's the meaning of all this? You plucked these employees off from me. I must sue you for sabotaging my business ops. Sakakibara, phone the cops. Understood, CEO Nakamura. What? The police? I'd obviously phone them, right? Suddenly, barging here and yelling at the top of your lungs, I should be the one suing you here. <laughs> You've gotten real cocky. Aren't we, after all I've done, is this how you thank me? I'm not even thankful in the slightest for all those times I spent with you. But if there's one thing I'm grateful for past that hellhole, it's that working in a toxic environment like Danten molded my company into what it is now today. What the hell are you getting at? You could sue all you want for what I care. I'll be willing to take them head on for the sake of our company, as well as the team members who cherish this workplace. I successfully drove Akutsu out of the company doors. Wow, you showed them who's the boss around here. Haruki? No, Principal Nakamura! I'm with you all the way with this company! No, really, guys. <laughs> Dang it! These youngsters! Getting full of themselves! I'm definitely suing these pricks! Just wait until I see how I bolster our company, Danten, and smash your puny company into bits. Akutsu? What do you want now? Uh, Ito? It's been a while. Are we doing a little tour around Nakamura-kun's company? Uh, you could say that. This cunning little vixen. Really, I simply thought that she wasn't stopping by my company these days, but doing these casual visit back and forth from Nakamura's playpen. Oh, saved me a lot of hassle. Here, take this. Let me see, what's this? A notice of dismissal? What? Is this some kind of joke? I'm not really the type who's into jokes. See, it was like something that I just did a bit earlier. So, I've just bought your company. What? Look, I've renamed the company from Daunton to Satan. I'll be overhauling the staff in a while too, so... How? Why? That means that this dismissal notice was... Why, it's a lovely present for you. Are you familiar with the theory of evolution? Sadly, such harmful pests and rodents aren't fit for co-evolution. Or, as the theory goes. P pest Well then, enough with the pleasantries. Please see through the essential tasks prior to transitioning after you go back to Danton. Later on, I heard that all of these occurred straight from Ito. Moreover, Ito duly gave us back both me and my former employees unpaid wages back from when we did overtime work. So that's how it went. Man, have things really calmed down for the better good? So, Haruki-kun, you prefer girls. Um, these Jill of all trades like Meg? <laughs> What's gotten into you so suddenly? I mean, it's- Oh, Ito here! Ito there! Coming out of your mouth! Ugh. Ito's simply my business partner. Really? Then would you date me after I graduate high school? What? Oh, you even said you wanted me to stay by my side back then. Remember? Yeah, that did happen. Uh, well, I'd still feel the same about it, but, uh... Jeez. After that, the two of us did become a thing. But that's another story to tell. Miss Miyamura, are you free? Wanna go to karaoke? No, no. How about you go out somewhere with me? Sorry, I'm not interested. She's so popular. My name is Seita Osanai. I'm just a regular junior in high school. 
The beautiful girl in front of me is Sakuna Miyamura. She's beautiful and smart, with her grades always at the top of the class. I'm definitely not good enough for her. Seita, you were looking at me, weren't you? Can I help you? No, nothing. I see. That's fine, but don't look at me. Sure. I'll be careful. I don't really know her, but we live near each other, and she's sort of a childhood friend. Why is that guy getting along with her? Right? I'm so jealous. <sighs> I can hear you whispering. What part of this looks like getting along? It's true that we were pretty friendly with each other up until middle school, but after we started high school, she suddenly got distant and we stopped hanging out. We didn't see each other often at school, so we just kind of stopped talking. Huh. I wonder if I did something to her when I wasn't thinking. Wait, these shoes. Hey sis, you're here. What, I'm not allowed to be here? Why are you already arguing with me? It's fine, but I was just surprised to see you here. She's my older sister, Shika. Seven years older than me, in fact, and married about a year ago. She left the house, but she lives nearby, so she comes over like this from time to time. Well, you're home early. You don't have any dates or anything? Of course I don't. You know I'm not popular. I know, but if you're in high school, you should make a girlfriend. And you shouldn't be so nervous. Hurry up and ask out Sakuna. Why Sakuna? I don't like her or anything. <laughs> what? Do you really think you're fooling me? It's so obvious. Shut up and mind your own business. You do realize that some other random dude is going to take her before you do, right? You aren't going to regret not making a move, are you? What are you talking about? I'm not even on her radar. I guess you hang out with her sometimes, but I don't even hang out with her at all. Ugh, you're so stupid. What do you mean, stupid? It's true that she doesn't like me. I see. If that's what you think. What's that? Ugh, I want to help, but you really got to catch on to these things on your own. Anyways, can you run to the drugstore? What? Why the drugstore? Because I want to ask you to buy me something. You're going to make me run errands for you? I don't want to. I'm tired. You have nothing to do. No, I need to play games. It's super important. Ugh, shut up and go! If you don't, I'm going to tell all the embarrassing secrets to Sakuna. I'll go right away, miss. What would you like me to buy for you? <laughs> Very well. Come back within 30 minutes. Here you go. It's all written down here. Ah, <sighs> she's still just as abrasive as always. Are all sisters abrasive to their brothers like this? Just go buy stuff on your own. And there's so much stuff. I mean, she probably made me go because there's a lot of stuff. Dude, pregnancy test? Come on! A high schooler shouldn't be buying this! I don't want other people to see it. I guess I can just hide it under all the other stuff. I headed to the cash register. Huh? Seita? I think it's the first time I've seen you here. Uh, Nina. Of course, she's working the register. Nina Morizaki. She's Sakuna's best friend, and we've known each other since elementary school. We've always hung out, so she really messes with me with no hesitation. I forgot that she worked part-time at a drugstore. I really wouldn't have bought this stuff if I'd known she was going to be here. What? Why do you look so upset to see me? No, I... I just figured you'd charge me extra or something. Uh, why would I do that? Even if you're the customer, this is my job. Wait, what is this? No, I have my reasons. Let's see, is it for Sakuna or someone else? No, it's not like that. This was all something that my sister asked me to go buy for her. What? You're lying. I'm not lying. I've never dated anyone in my life. It's fine. You don't have to make excuses like that. I think I'm pretty understanding. No, it's not an excuse. <laughs> I'm teasing you, buddy. Relax. <laughs> I know you don't have anyone like that in your life, and your sister's always making you run errands for her. I'm glad you believe me, but that sounds terrible. It's a fact. So what are you going to do? 
Hmm, this might be interesting. Maybe I'll tell Sakuna that you were buying a pregnancy test. Do not do that. She might misunderstand. Hmm, <laughs> what should I do? <sighs> you want something to eat? What? You're gonna buy me something? Yeah, if it's something here, I'll buy one of something. But don't tell her. Okay, deal. Afterwards, I bought some chocolate as bribery to stop her from talking. Here's your stuff, sis. Thanks. <laughs> were you nervous? I knew you were messing with me. I mean, yeah, but I didn't really feel good, so you helped me out. No probs. You're making it difficult to be mad at you. I'm gonna go back to my room now. Sure, thanks. The next day. Oh, morning, Seitai. How was the result? Oh, positive, I guess. That's why they're gonna go to the hospital today to confirm it. Wow, totally worth embarrassing yourself yesterday, huh? Hopefully she's pregnant. Yeah, I hope so. Nina, Seita, what are you two talking about? Uh, Sakuna? Seita, who's the girl? Is it someone I know? No, it's not me. It's my sister, Shika. How could you use Sheena as an excuse? Don't talk to me. Wait, it's not a lie. Hang on. No, there's nothing else to be said. I tried to resolve the misunderstanding, but she wouldn't listen to me at all. And before I knew it, class was over. Oh, don't worry about it, Seta. Bad timing. Don't say that like it's not your fault. What? It's not like I told her directly. It was an accident. But you did give me chocolate, so let's have a little fun, huh? What? What kind of fun? Yeah, leave it to me. First, you ask out Sakuna. Huh? Why? <laughs> you keep this up and she's not going to listen to you. So, you need to do something that's even more impactful. No, no. She's misunderstanding that I made someone pregnant. So asking her out will only shock her more. Uh, I mean, that's just because you're trying to get her to listen, right? I mean, yeah, but I don't even like... Okay, we're not even gonna start that. Literally everyone in school knows that you have a thing for her. Sis told me that too. Am I that obvious? Yeah, and it's more odd to me how she hasn't noticed. <sighs> yeah, so just hurry up and figure out the misunderstanding. Uh, okay. We live close by, so I'll just go by her house on my way home. Okay, good luck asking her out! I'm not going to ask her out. I'm just going to fix the misunderstanding. I cleaned up and headed to her house without even going home first. I used to always come here when I was young. It's pretty nerve-wracking coming now, but I need to fix this. Yes? Oh... It's you. Oh, hey, Sakuna. I wanted to talk to you. Are you free? No, it's fine. I've worked it out. Yeah, I don't think you have. No, I have. It's fine. No, it's not fine. And I don't want you to misunderstand me. Uh-huh. Why not? Because I've liked you since I was in elementary school. Huh? Oh, crap! I just asked her out by accident! Sorry! Why are you apologizing? Was that a joke? That you liked me? No, 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 no. It's, it's not a joke, but... I really wanted to ask you when we were on better terms. Then ask me out again. And this time without surprising me like that. I'll listen. I mean, that's a little embarrassing. If you're not going to ask me, then I guess I'll go back inside. Okay, okay, I'll say it, so don't leave. But I want you to actually give me a real answer, too. Okay, sure. I've always liked you. Please, go out with me. Uh, I want you to react somehow. I asked you out twice now. Uh, sorry, I was just so happy enjoying the moment. <laughs> I've always liked you, too. Let's go out. Y yeah. You don't look happy. Is something wrong? Sorry, I know I'm the one that asked you out, but I'm not sure I understand what's going on. I thought you didn't like me. 
What? Why would you think that? Because you're always distant at school, and we stopped hanging out. That's because I was really nervous and shy, so I couldn't hold a conversation with you. Uh, I see. Then, why did you say yes to going out with me when you thought that I might have made someone else pregnant? Wouldn't that make you even more angry? Oh, and just so we're clear, that was for my sister, like I said at school. Yeah, I know. I figured that out before you came here. Huh? But you completely misunderstood me! Did you come home and calm down? No, that's not it. I ran into your sister coming home from the hospital. Oh, hey, Sakuna! Oh, Shika. You look upset. Is something wrong? Well... <laughs> that pregnancy test was mine! <laughs> huh? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, seriously. There's not a chance that he would have anyone to go out with like that. <laughs> oh, I just went to the hospital to confirm, but I'm pregnant. Huh, congratulations. Thank you. When the baby's born, can I come see it? Yeah, I'd love that. Oh, and Nina too. Yeah, I'll let Nina know. Oh, but I kind of misunderstood what he said and didn't listen to him. Well, it's my fault too, so I'll tell him when he gets home. Really? Thank you, Shika. Don't worry, I started this. <laughs> I don't want to get between you and your crush. Shika! Don't be like that! Oh, you're gonna embarrass me! Oh, come on. I think I hit the nail on the head. Y yeah, but don't tell him, okay? I know. So, yeah, you didn't see her? Oh, I came here before I went home, so I didn't get a chance. Uh, I see. You wanted to explain yourself that much, huh? Yeah, I guess so. I see. <laughs> hey, Seta, I know that it was a misunderstanding and we just started dating, but if you cheat on me, I'm never going to forgive you. It's fine. I just started dating you. I would never cheat. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes you say things that really embarrass me. I feel like I should just tell you how I'm feeling, you know? I see. Okay. Well, then I'm going to tell you everything I've been holding in, so be ready! We both didn't see eye to eye at one point, but I'm sure we'll get along with each other now. Oh, welcome home, Seda. I'm home. I met Sakuna on the way home from the hospital, so I fixed some misunderstanding that happened between you two. Oh, thanks. I just met her, too. She told me. Oh, really? Sounds like you really fixed things with her, huh? And something else happened? What? No! Oh, you're dating now, huh? How can you tell? Yeah, it's written on your forehead. My dreams came true. I guess that's why you're my sister. <sighs> this was all because I sent you out to buy things for me. That's why you were able to date her. You should worship me. You realize that she almost hated me because of you, right? Oh, but the result is what matters. I mean, yeah. Besides, if you had just asked her out sooner, none of this would have happened. I mean, I thought she hated me, so I wasn't confident. Yeah, it was just because she was nervous around you. Ugh, it was so obvious. Yeah, she told me earlier. Just be careful, huh? You better be more aware of her feelings. She can be a little heavy sometimes, so if you are suspected of cheating from something like this, she won't let it go easily. I'll make sure to be careful. This is going to be tough. I ended up with Sakuna constantly thinking I was cheating and constantly reassuring her. But a few years later, I would end up having my own child with her. That's a story for another day. <laughs>